this bag of pork rinds. This is one of the wonders of the world in my mind. Like, if you go out into nature and you think, look at all these cells and organisms that are working naturally to make life possible. No one, no one person could sit there and, and pretty much control those billions of cells simultaneously to make them into something like that. Pork rinds are kind of the same way. So I went to the University of Alabama for a mechanical engineering degree and then was kind of tired of engineering by the time I graduated. I felt like I was going to be in an office all day and uh, my dad mentioned, hey, why don't you just run a route? So Brims were a small um, snack food company based out of Memphis, Tennessee. Um, they started with just making pork rinds and cracklings. This is what my family has done for a long time. My grandfather was a part of it, my dad's a part of it, my mom, my brother. I enjoy this job now because I'm actually out talking to people every day. Oh, how's business been, Ricky? I'm good, my brother. All right. What, to what happened to the, uh, the older lady that used to work here? Yes, she she still... worked, but she got a vacation right now. I just enjoy hearing people's stories. You got shot. Remember, like the last, Last year, like year and a half ago. Yeah. Christmas Eve. Yeah. You got shot? Yeah, I did. Dude, I didn't realize you got shot. Year and a half. That's why I know. I have a lot of respect for these guys that open up convenience stores because it's not easy. You've got to have your mind around thousands of different items, but you've also got to learn how to deal with people, which is the hardest thing. Not easy at all. And then there's another store, um, an Indian lady who is, she's hilarious. She's, she's tough as nails. Because when I first started doing this, I, I wasn't the most consistent of showing up on time or being there in my first couple months. And she, she straightened me out. And she, Every two weeks become every three and a half weeks. Yeah, Inconsistency. Come on, Luke. I don't know if it's a full Inconsistency was month. an issue up until I talked to him. The consequence is gonna, was going to be he was going to be on the back of the store where nobody shops, behind a cooler door where his chips were going to get smashed every time when somebody opens the door. What really got me, um, was when she told me that, you know, you say you're going to be here at 9 o'clock and you don't, you're not here at 9 o'clock. She's like, I can't trust you. And that kind of, that hurt. I realized, oh my gosh, like I'm, I can't do that. Ever since that point, I kind of, that's when I started viewing my job less of being about making sales and making money and more about taking care of people. We, we become good friends. You know, we get caught up talking in other, other stuff other than the, the chips and, uh, and the pork rinds. And then he forget to do actually what is what, what was he here for. <laughs> she gets on to me for not doing what I'm supposed to do. Then distracts yeah. me from doing yeah. what I'm supposed How to do. How was that distracting? <laughs> so. Again, we're kind of, we're a small family run company. We don't, we're not a billion dollar Uts or Golden Flake. We don't have shareholders and people like that that we have to please. That kind of allows us to provide products at a affordable, a reasonable price. The, just a regular bag of Doritos from a gas station, that's over $2 now, which is hard for a lot of people. The decision makers at those big companies keep their jobs when the numbers on paper look good. So if the numbers are down, they'll cut pay or they'll lay people off. I understand what they're doing. They've got a responsibility to shareholders. But we don't have to do that. Hey, boy, I got a rep for real now. 
They got reports. They got, hey, great music. With my good music coming out, man. <laughs> on the way. I have my boy on here with me. You gonna be on the next bags? Man, I hope so. <laughs> it's not so much the chip business as it is the people business. Say that again? You're telling me on the phone that you kind of wanted to set this up for more low income? Yeah. Uh... Because I have a passion for helping low-income people, and I want this store to be cheaper than the grocery store down the road. Okay. And still make a living. Still make a living, that's right. Because I can't help them if I'm not making a living. <laughs> you know, my goal is to help make that store as good as it can be. That's one thing that really helped me is knowing that, you know, Technically, on paper, I'm working for myself, but just by doing that in and of itself helps everybody.